tonight on Super Size versus Super Skinny. You've got a ringside seat when underweight scrawny Kevin. Look at it, and you wonder why the size that you are with are the breakfast. Still eating it? Meets his match in Food Machine Julie. It's now worrying me because my body's only going to take so much. Why not treat yourself? A treat is a big fat cream cake. Not in a treat. Serial failed dieter Anna Richardson goes to the next level. Hypnosis. How old are you? About nine. And flab fighting Gillian gives her big bottom girls from Wales a surfing lesson with a difference. Get off your ass! <laughs> Microscopic Kevin is a super skinny, desperate to pile on some pounds. I've got to that point where I do think that I am probably the lowest weight that I've been, and that I am probably too thin, and that I obviously do want to build up a little bit. Kevin will be spending a week in this feeding clinic overseen by Dr. Christian Jessen. Kevin's undergone a full medical to make sure he's fit for purpose. Five foot nine and a half. An average man of five foot nine and a half inches should weigh 11 stone. Eight and a half stone. Which means that Kevin is two and a half stone underweight. It worries me a little bit because I didn't realise that I was that thin. I mean, your body mass is about 16, 16.5. Now, for me, an ideal body weight is about 20 to 25, OK? So you're well under. You really are quite skinny. You've got no body fat on you whatsoever. Nothing. I don't have the time to eat with the lifestyle that I lead because I have two jobs. I'm literally always really busy and just miss meals because of that and just suppress it. And should really just um, the reason I wanted to do this show is because I'm the lowest weight that I've ever been. Kevin, originally from Doncaster, moved to Brighton two years ago. Along with his new life has come responsibilities. With rent and bills to pay, Kevin holds down two jobs. This hectic life means no time for proper meals. It's to do with my manic lifestyle, the reason why I don't eat. It's not on my radar all the time, really. I don't actually realise it till later on that day that I've actually not eaten anything. His day job in a department store means an early start. Breakfast is the usual, a coffee and a fag. He almost never eats breakfast. I, uh, usual, please. Seven hours later is lunch, with just a pit stop to a cafe for his favourite, a scrambled egg sandwich and a coffee. Even his first meal of the day isn't really enjoyed. He wolfs down what he can and gives Brighton's other residents the rest. After work, there's no time for dinner as Kevin needs to get to job number two as a barman in a local pub. I'm always on the go. I, d I don't like sitting down really for long periods of time. And just my lifestyle's really affected my diet, really. Well, he doesn't look like he eats anything at all. I've seen him eat twice in all the time I've known him. Um, so I don't know where the energy comes from. After a whopping 16 hours at work and only an egg sandwich, dinner is just an orange juice. A long time without any actual proper food in my body and what am I doing to myself and I need to sort that out. But someone who does make plenty of time in her day for food <laughs> is Julie, Kevin's nemesis. She's a supersizing 26 stone. I find it strange how an underweight person could eat nothing, you know. It just seems strange to me, because I eat so much. For cereal eater Julie, her day is an endless love affair with food. How long is it going to be? Uh, about 20 minutes, darling. But with son Jordan also eating the same, she's decided to face her issues once and for all. He's not immensely overweight, but whilst I carry on eating what I'm eating, obviously he's doing the same. But I couldn't help him if I can't help me. Julie's got just four days to teach Kevin the joys of eating. And by sizing down to his portions, Julie's own weight problem will be tackled once and for all. 370 pounds. Yeah. 
is now worrying me because my body's only going to take so much. These two are polar opposites when it comes to dangerous, extreme eating. Their bodies screen the results. Julie's waist is more than twice the size of Kevin's. What she doesn't know is that she is literally busting a gut. You've got a hernia as well, haven't you? Is that what that is? Yeah. So you've got two muscles here and here. Huh? And they've got weak and they've gone to the side and everything else in your gut is sort of pushing out and that's what that is. It's not is, serious. Is it dangerous? No, not dangerous at all. As you lose weight and you get a bit fitter and your muscles tone up and things, it'll get better. Do you think you're going to learn something from this swap? I think I'll be really hungry at the end you of think? the week. You think you're going to cope with that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely cope. Yeah. Um, it'll open my eyes, cos I can never understand, cos I've always liked my food, how anyone could be really skinny. I think that feeling of hunger that you say you never really experience never. anymore is actually going to be quite a good thing for you. With an 18-stone difference, these two are here to teach each other a hard lesson in food and nutrition. By swapping diets, they will be shocked into facing their own body issues and be forced to finally change their relationship with food for good. It's going to be hard for them because if they're not used to eating and then all of a sudden they've got all this food to eat all of the time, it's going to be very difficult, very difficult. But for Kevin, there are more basic concerns. I just think if someone was overweight and smelly, then um, that would be just my worst nightmare. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Hello. Hi. Pleased to meet you. I'm Julie. I'm from Harlow in Essex. I'm Kevin. I uh, come from Brighton. Are you nervous? Um, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, I weigh eight and a half stone. I weigh 26 stone three. Very slim, isn't it? So Mine's double, almost double. Because yeah. like, yours looks like, um, like really little. Have you always been that way? Yeah. I would associate an underweight person to be more uh, a woman, really, yeah. rather than a man. I found it quite shocking, just, you know, how skinny he was. Tiny, you know, no fat on him whatsoever. Julie will be trying to add curves to Kevin by handing over her meals for the next few days. To show them exactly what they've got to stomach, Dr Jessen's going to demonstrate what a week's worth of their food looks like. It's time now for us to have a look at exactly what it is you've been eating. Kevin's up first with a week's worth of his teeny tiny breakfasts. With your cigarettes, you use them as a substitute for food. Cigarettes suppress your appetite, so that's how you can get through a morning without eating, but your body is suffering because of it. That looks like egg yeah, something. Egg, scrambled egg, egg sandwich. What's that? Oh, look. Chocolate more crisps. chocolate, more crisps. And as yet... I haven't seen anything green. Is that it? In an entire week. With his busy lifestyle, Kevin should be consuming 2,700 calories a day. But he's only getting 2,150, which is an under-eat of nearly two days' worth of food a week. I can't believe there's not one cooked meal there, Kevin. You know that's not good, then. Not good at all. I like hot cross buns. I tend to have a couple of them in the morning. With what? Um, butter and jam. It comes a full English. Yeah. So it is basically two breakfasts that yeah. you're getting through, isn't it? How many cups of tea would you have a day? About six to eight. I worked out that if you combine your sugar intake, your butter intake, and the milk that you use, that's about 1,500 calories a day. Just in that. The average woman needs 2,000 calories a day. Julie is consuming a staggering 5,000. That's 35,000 a week, which is a jaw-dropping overeat of ten and a half days' food every week. I can't say you're missing lots of important vitamins and minerals because you eat so much food that you are eventually getting them, yeah. but it could be so much better. From this point onwards, this is where we swap you over on your diets, OK? And the whole point is you're going to learn from each other. It's then quite alarming how much food she does actually eat. Compared to yours? Compared to mine. The fact that she has two breakfasts usually in the morning. I'm a bit cautious about what I'm going to have to eat now over the next few days. And I think I might get fat. <laughs> Scary thoughts. Coming up... Look at it, and you wonder why you're size you are. Well, with the breakfast... I'm not saying... Tempers reach boiling point in the feeding clinic. Can we start? I need the toilet. Anna Richardson's dieting quest pushes her under. How do you feel? <laughs> I've been asleep for about a million years. 
and Gillian McKeith tries to get her wobbling rears served into shape. By the end of the four weeks, I want your Welsh wear bits to be the tightest tushes in the valley. Fan big fun! We're a nation of large arses, the biggest in Europe, in fact, and I'm on a mission to reduce them. I'm here to get your bombs into shape! But first, I'm travelling the length and breadth of the country to see the extent of the problem and amass an army of big bums. My platoon of plump posteriors will all do a tour of duty to test gadgets that claim to trim your tush. Have you got a town bottom or not? I can help you get a town bottom. Stop right there, madam! Can I have a feel of your bottom? Now, you need toning in that bum. What about your bottom? Is it a nice bottom? Huge! Bottom. Huge! <laughs> Does he have a soggy ass? No, no, he's got a good ass, man, but I'm not gay. A bit of wiggle, madam. <laughs> <laughs> My survey has revealed that the average British bum clocks in at a whopping 40 and a half inches. It's time for action. Tonight, I'm taking on some mighty Welsh dragons and their beefy buns. What have you done to yourselves, ladies? Can you come down here for a minute? This is the most exercise she's had all week. <laughs> a 52-inch bum. What are we going to do? Maybe a miracle? <laughs> <laughs> An average of 46.1 inches, my Welsh wobblers are six inches over the national average. A side-splitting total of 507. That's the same width as seven Mini Coopers laid end to end. Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how to... Surf's up at Cardiff Bay for my soggy-bottomed babes, and it's time for them to ride the waves. Ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> My surfer friend here, Scott, is going to help us today. I'd like you to unzip your jackets and get into your bikinis for me, please. Felt the cold. Oh, come on, man. But will a bit of rough and tumble with their very own hunky surfer get rid of their ripples? We're going to practice because we want to get the action right. So into the water, please. <laughs> But these girls don't need to get wet and wild. Even though I've arranged a private surfer for each of these ladies, it's less man and more machine. So it's time to step inside. Come on in. Yeah, there we go. What I want you to do right now is to find a board and stand beside it. Right then, you want to tie asses? Mount your surfers, please. Let's go surfing now. Everybody's learning how. <laughs> Ladies, listen up. I want to see you go from beached to peached. Retailing at £399, the makers claim that this surf simulator can trim and tone the trunk of the body and that a daily half-hour session could lead to an inch a week loss on your rear. What this will do is it's going to tone your stomach, your bum, your thighs. You're really going to feel it in I those areas. I feel it in my thighs already. <laughs> They're getting into it. Pretty good. Get off your ass. <laughs> oh, come on. Ladies, by the end of the four weeks, I want your Welsh wear bits to be the tightest tushes in the valley. So get surfing, OK? <laughs> Super skinny, eight and a half stone Kevin, who's got no time for proper meals, has swapped diets with super size, 26 stone Julie. It's their first night in the feeding clinic, and Kevin's dinner is about to get super sized. Do you like orange? Oh, is that what I'm getting? <laughs> Kevin's dinner is his pub special four orange juices. So I've got to have four of these. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Will he chow down on Julie's pie and mash? And will Julie quench her hunger with just two pints of orange juice? Come on, get the stuck plate's in. just really full. Yeah. It's just too much bloody food on the plate. All this food swimming around in mountains of gravy. You need to start getting some weight on you. Kevin might think there's too much food on his plate, but he should be enjoying his mash because it can be a powerhouse of nutrients. It contains valuable vitamins and minerals, including potassium, which is important for the proper functioning of all cells and nerves. Whatever your weight, mashed potato is a low-fat, quick and cheap way of eating something healthy that will fill you up till your next meal. Well, I'm on number two now, my orange juices for my dinner. <laughs> so I've got half a plate of mash here yeah. as well. <laughs> well, I'd rather have half a plate of mash than be on my second orange juice for my dinner. I can't believe that. For his dinner, he would have 
a drink, but four orange juices for his dinner. It, it totally amazes me. <sighs> you finished now, then? Yeah. I feel really bloated, and my stomach sort of hurts a little bit, and I feel like I've still got a bit of potato at the back of my throat or something. Um, so, not that all pleasant. Day two begins with an early snack for Kevin. One tea with three sugars and three rounds of toast with full-fat butter and jam. But this is only Julie's first breakfast. Breakfast number two is a belly-busting two crumpets with butter and jam and a bowl of sugar puffs with full-fat milk. So much food. And for Julie, who's still waiting for her first proper meal of the diet swap, there's only a bar of chocolate. I wonder what my next bit of food is going to be. Lunch brings some hope for Julie as Kevin cooks up his signature dish. For me, this toasted sandwich with scrambled egg in the middle mm. is absolute heaven. Unbelievable. You are way under eating. And you're a man as well. You should way be eating more than this. Sandwich. For Kevin, it's more carbs. A white bread sandwich with full fat cheddar cheese and, oh, a little salad. It's the first thing you would have eaten then in two days. I just would have thought this meal would have been a lot bigger. But you've wolfed that down. This is the first thing I've eaten in two days. And I didn't even enjoy it. 37 year old Julie has two older sisters. They all live close by and regularly meet up for meals out. Do you know she eats too much? If she's happy, she eats. If she's sad, she eats. <laughs> it's just the way she is. But I don't, yeah, I don't know where that comes from, really, because we've all been brought up the same. My other two sisters, you know, they're older, but they're very, you know, quite glamorous and athletic and, you know, uh, into going out and um, they like looking nice and they go out clothes shopping and, you know, I would never do that with them. How many calories are you doing a day? Let's I don't know, I mean, this is like... It's a week's meal, there. A week's I feel for her sometimes because I know that she wants to be slim. She's never been slim. But it's still how you feel inside, isn't it? You, you know, you always like looking round and you always feel conscious and. Do you? Yeah. For Kevin, who's now on Julie's diet, the food keeps coming. <laughs> Julie's snacks alone are over 1,200 calories a day. Next up, Kevin faces a three course dinner. So what have I got for dinner tonight? For orange juice and lemonade again. Unbelievable. For Kevin, he's facing the meal of his life. Julie's prepared some of her old favourites. Stuffed potato skins, chicken and chips, and a spotted dick and custard. It tastes really nice this actually. Mm. Despite another liquid dinner for Julie, she's still able to show Kevin some motherly love. I really can't believe, Kevin, you're not having a dinner again. This isn't a diet, is it? This is starvation. It was another night when I was working at the pub. This isn't normal, Kevin. You know what I mean? But nothing, you're but because of, my life... no, it's not because of my you're lifestyle, not. I physically can't. Oh. Rubbish. Is this because you're a little bit hungry, though, as well? Do you know what it have. is? Because you're winding me up. I'm not making excuses. Right, do you want your other thing that you can have? Well, no, because this is my dinner, isn't it? No, you've got another surprise oh, as well. Um, you don't drink, but I can offer you anyway. At the end of my shift anyway, right, yeah. I would get a Blue Wicked. Would you like one? Oh, I don't know. I don't, well, that's not food, is it? Why not treat yourself? Right, so you would have four oranges and lemonades and then one of them. I can't believe that a grown man would eat one scrambled egg sandwich all day with a treat of a bottle of alcohol when he hasn't eaten all day. How is that a treat? A treat is a big fat cream cake. That ain't nice. a treat. I think it's, it's a joke. Kevin leads a really hectic life, but he lives on around half his recommended calorie intake. Right, Kevin, come along with me. I'm hoping that the photo gallery will show him that his under-eating will have serious consequences on his body. What do you think? My bone there and the bone there really sticks out on that picture. You don't have great skin, do you? No. You have no fresh fruit and vegetables whatsoever. You have virtually no vitamin C on your diet, apart from that occasional orange juice, you know, after you've finished work. I yeah. think when I get you on this proper balanced diet, you will actually see your skin really improve dramatically, which should make you a lot happier. 
If you are under eating, you could increase your chances of getting acne, as you could be missing out on zinc and vitamin C. What about these pickies? Not a lot of flesh on you, is there? You know, I know there's a look, and there's a look to be slim, but this has gone a little bit too far, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, you have a really busy lifestyle. You're working two jobs, but you're going to need some energy to get you through that long term. You know, if you get ill, what's going to happen? Being severely underweight may mean you have a weaker immune system that can leave you susceptible to other illnesses. I think this is the worst picture, because you're just so incredibly slim. There's nothing there, is yeah. there? I mean, this one really alarms me seeing this one up big because obviously you can see where my bone is there. My veins are really, really prominent. Your veins are really prominent because you have absolutely no body fat whatsoever. It is just skin there, isn't it? Look how you can see. It's when it's actually in a big picture like that that you actually... You realise. You realise how bad it really is. I mean, I think perhaps in your head you think you only need to put on a couple more pounds or something, but I'm thinking you can do well to put on a couple of stone and you will still look slim, but you won't look unhealthy and really underweight. It's been four weeks since I sent my Welsh wobblers off for their rear reducing rehab. But have they whittled down their wide loads or have they wiped out? Welsh ladies, you girls try to surf yourself slim. After four weeks, the question is, are you still beached Wales or has the tide turned? Our Cardiff lasses have had some surfing time to reduce their rears, but what will the tape measure reveal? Ladies, how's the surfing going? Is it working? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I did this. The machine did this. <laughs> <laughs> and evidently that hurt. I went from 54 inches around my bum to 50 inches around my bum. So I was happy with that. I lost two and a half inches. Uh, I'm over the moon about this. Absolutely fantastic. I, yes. I wouldn't have thought that I'd have done that well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it to my friends, but not too many because I don't want them to get thinner than me. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yes. Four weeks ago, these dumpy dragons clocked in a group total of 507 inches around their derrieres. They're now down to 482 inches. Cardiff! The Welsh bottoms have lost a total overall of 25 and a half inches! <laughs> and that averages out at 2.32 inches! This means that my Cardiff ladies have gone to the top of my bum-busting leaderboard. Back in the feeding clinic, another day brings breakfast and Julie uses her motherly persuasion to get Kevin to eat proper meals and presents him with a full English fry-up. But you ever have a fry-up? Yeah, but really, really, very rarely. So this is like what I've got for breakfast, eight biscuits. You sit there and eat eight biscuits. Could easily put a couple of bits of toast in or put, do yourself a bowl of cereal. But as usual, you're sitting there eating every single bit. Look at it. And you wonder why the size that you are. But you've still eaten it. I'm not saying... I'm, it's not about me for a second. Mm. You say it? this, but every single morning you've had really, like, full meals first thing in the morning. And you, you, know do, do you wonder why the size you are, no, though. Do you know what? By why? And every single morning you've eaten it. Have you enjoyed that, then? It's all right. Yeah. Enjoy your biscuits. If someone cooked you three or four meals a day, you would sit there and eat every one of them. No? Can we stop? I need the toilet. I don't mean to moan at him. He can moan at me just as much for being the size I am, but I just think he needs to understand that um, he's got to stop making them excuses first. You all right? Yeah, have you finished your biscuits, yeah? 
No, nearly. Have I upset you? No, 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 no. I just need... No. What's the matter? Nothing. Serious? What's the matter? Is it hitting home a bit? Yeah. OK. It did become quite intense this morning. I did feel as though I wanted to go home, but I then, at the back of my head, remembered that I've come here for a reason and, and with a goal and with a name of what I want to achieve from this. I am realising about myself and realising that I am after going to make some changes when I do go back home to my own life. In three days, I've worked out I've had eight bourbon biscuits and a scrambled egg sandwich. Coming up, starvation kicks in for Julie. <sighs> while Kevin literally explodes on yet more food. Unbelievable. Anna Richardson confronts the power of food over us all. And resist me. See how weak you are. And Gillian saddles up to find out which pudding is first past the calorie post. You look gorgeous, boys. Absolutely fab. So far in my quest to drop a dress size or two, I've tried the strangest ways to lose weight. I've gone in search of a surgical quick fix, bon appetit, and I've tried to find a miracle weight loss pill. And although I've lost half a stone in total, they were all flawed, and none of them have stopped me wanting to pig out on all my favourite foods. Do you know what? I'm absolutely starving. I've just nipped out to get a load of supplies. Bread. Pastries. This is my real comfort food. Pasta, crisps. Oh. I'm your typical failed dieter. I'll stick to the latest fad for a few days. So this week I'm taking my dieting to a higher plane with hypnosis. From now on, dieting will no longer be about my rumbling tummy. It's all about the power of the mind. Hypnosis, schmipmosis. I mean, come on. I mean, some people think it's great, but I reckon it's it's probably a load of old baloney. OK, so I'm a bit sceptical, but it's apparently what caused Lily Allen to drop two dress sizes. And you can't deny, she does look great. But before I embark on this mind game, I want some proof. So I've come to Leicester to meet 32-year-old Catherine, who's been hypnotised to eat less. It has changed me. I've dropped a dress size in three weeks. And there's no effort there from my part. It's all because my mind is now telling me to change the way that I eat, change the choices that I make with my food. Fantastic lunch. Grubs up. Brilliant. Let's Thank see you. how Catherine gets on with a plate of pasta. She claims to only eat now till she's full. Unlike me. Do you know what? I could probably pack in double that amount. I love pasta. And once I start, I can't stop. That's a huge portion, though. Do you think so? Yes. You see, I look at that and I think, is there a war on? Brilliant. It's little lame. You're full. Mm. You've only had a tiny bit. But I feel full, so I've obviously had enough. Thanks very much. The meal will go in handy and um, long may your hypnosis reign. Thank you. Good luck to you. Leading hypnotherapist Marissa Peer has agreed to help me lose weight. Fat chance, but here goes. As I count backwards, you're going to see your feet, hear your feet, feel your feet, treading each step. So right now you're looking down 10 steps. How old are you? About nine. Just describe what's going on. It's Sunday lunch and it's very stressful. And it has to be a family lunch and it has to be a roast dinner. And therefore, we have to eat everything. You have to eat everything because of your dad. Mind you. So just take this hand and just squeeze it into a fist. And this is how big your stomach is. And now every time you're eating, you can literally feel your stomach contracting. And for you saying no to excessive amounts of food is saying yes to being the weight and the shape and the size you want to be. And food can never, ever be an issue again. Food can never control you. 
just open up your eyes feeling really good about this session. How do you feel? <laughs> like I've been asleep for about a million years. It's so peculiar. You really do kind of go into this trance-like state. It's almost like, if you've never been hypnotised, it's almost like just that period of time just before you wake up and you're kind of aware of what's going on and you feel incredibly relaxed. You know, it's a really nice state to be in. I don't know how this is happening, but the following morning, instead of my Carb City breakfast, toast, crumpets, lashings of butter and jam, I'm content just to eat some fruit. What did she do to my brain? Check that out. Marissa, you'd be proud of me. But is there any basis for why hypnosis might work? I'm hoping psychologist Dr Emma Short can give me the answer. Firstly, there's a state called focused attention. But it's also accompanied by this really heightened relaxation. I don't know, did you experience that, this feeling of real floatiness? I felt very, very calm and very focused. If in a normal conversation I said to you, oh, can you remember the first time you ever went into the cloakroom at school when you were five to get your PE bag? You probably couldn't. But with very highly focused attention, you could probably remember what it was like. And then if I asked you, how did it smell? Was it raining? And so on. And I started to engage all your other senses. It would become more and more vivid and more and more real. So if it's done well, you get this short, really intense burst of that early experience that may be affecting present behaviour. So maybe it is possible to get my unhealthy eating habits hypnotised away. OK, it's a day since I've been hypnotised to not overeat and to avoid eating absolute rubbish. So this is the acid test. Ooh, white bloomer. I mean, to be honest, it smells absolutely delicious. Do I want to eat it? No. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that normally I could just eat packets and packets and packets of. It really doesn't bother me. I'm slightly worried about where old Porker Richardson has gone. She, who could literally do an eat-all-you-like buffet, no problem at all, suddenly not interested, really, in all that old, fatty, greasy, carby food that I used to love. I'm kind of um, really content just to eat really small amounts and, and quite healthy stuff. You know what? That was delicious. And I've even left a bit on the plate. I wouldn't dream of eating a bar of chocolate right now. I'm worried that I'll still go weak at the knees at the sight of a bowl of crisps or a packet of biscuits. So Marissa has some visual devices to put me off those foods for good. So a little exercise in fat burning. You know, we all delude ourselves at crisps. Crisps are just potatoes cooked in natural oil, but they are in fact solidified fat and when you set fire to a crisp you're going to see how slowly that burns. Imagine how hard your body has to work to burn off that fat. Can you see the fat coming out now? Ew! Yeah, look, and you can get a teaspoon of fat from this crisp. Smell that? That smells fishy. Put your finger and thumb together for me like that and when I pull them apart. I want you to resist. So as I pull, you push. So just keep resisting me. So you can see you're very strong. Take that and put your finger and thumb together for me and resist me. See how weak you are. Just, I mean, that's just like pulling all pieces of paper apart. It's so simple. You can't, I can't even resist. It's bizarre. You literally have no strength in your hands at all. That's like a baby. Okay. Put your finger and thumb together and resist me. Can you see the difference? Because you're holding a proper food, a real food. Within 10 days, you will form a different relationship that will last forever. And that's it. We're all done. I look forward to seeing less of you very soon. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if Marissa is pulling another part of my body, my leg, but find out later if I lose any weight. Back in the feeding clinic and in the blue corner, we have super skinny flyweight Kevin. 
And in the red corner is our supersized heavyweight, Julie. So far, it's been a battle of wills. This isn't a diet, is it? This is starvation. Well, no, you're always making excuses. Like, no, 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 Do you know what it is? Because you're winding me up. Let me start. I need the toilet. However, Julie's motherly touch is beginning to have an effect on Kevin. I did feel as though I wanted to go home, but remembered that I've come here for a reason and I'm with a goal and with a name of what I want to achieve from this. OK. It's lunchtime on day three, and Julie is still waiting to eat a proper meal. Lunch. <laughs> for Kevin, it's a full-fat cheese and tomato sandwich with thick oven chips, and for Julie, it's only a fizzy drink. You know, in three days, I've worked out I've had eight bourbon biscuits and a scrambled egg sandwich. <sighs> it's scary, I know it is. It's awful. I could really eat that in a moment. It was really nice. It looks really nice. <laughs> Unbelievable. You just filmed that, didn't you? Oh, disgusting. Oh. Saddle up, because this week you've got your just desserts as puddings are on the menu here at the Horse Show in Olympia in London. My stallions and I have come to see if people know their food facts from their pony and traps on three mouth-watering desserts. <laughs> Decadent desserts are tempting to taste, but they might just go right to your waist. Now, I've whipped up three versions of the Great British Pud to test your knowledge. Here I've got apple pie and custard, my second pud, fruit pavlova, and my third pud, cheesecake. Now, which pud do this lot of horse lovers think is the most calorie laden? Now, which one do you think is the highest in calories? I think the pavlova. I think the apple pie. Chocolate cheesecake. Pavlova. The chocolate cake. I would say probably the cheesecake. You look gorgeous, boys. Absolutely fab. <laughs> gorgeous, guys. It was close, but 41 out of 100 horsey people thought that the pavlova was the most calorific pudding. Well, this horsey set clearly know their puddings, as it's the chocolate cheesecake which comes out on top with a saddle splitting 530 calories. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. For the same amount of calories, you could eat five pots of chocolate mousse, eight bourbon biscuits or 27 mint crisps. I'm glad the cheesecake's the highest, because that's my least favourite. Next, with 503 calories, is the apple pie and custard. The apple pie contains 360 calories a portion. That's not good. But if you like your fruit pies, I've come up with three lower calorie alternatives. And the gold medal winner is the fruit pavlova with just 326 calories. The light and airy meringues piled high with fresh fruit and a topping of whipped cream brings us pudding in with the lowest calories. I still <laughs> eat the apple pie. He doesn't go with the pie, though. <laughs> that is really good noise. It's the final meal in the feeding clinic, and Kevin's in for a treat as Julie has cooked up roast beef, Yorkshire puddings, and all the trimmings. Unbelievable. And Julie can't quite believe her luck. After nearly four days of just snack food, she's finally getting her first real meal, scampi and chips. So, our last meal. Save the best till last. Well, let's have some chips, Kevin. Instead of the usual bickering, both Kevin and Julie seem happy to chow down and eat. I'm doing that. No, it's all that. I've been dead jealous watching you eat all them pucker meals. <laughs> I've been eating all this crap. <laughs> I hope it works, Kevin. Yeah, I hope it works for you as well. Yeah. That was beautiful. Cheers. Here's the losing weight and putting weight on. Oh, bless. Kevin and Julie are at the end of the shock diet swap therapy. 
Dr. Jasson is now going to give them a new 12-week healthy eating plan. So, you've got to the last day. How's it been? Awful. Really? It's been hard, very yeah. hard. Kevin? Mm. Jay, it's certainly made me realise that I don't eat enough and that I need to go home and evaluate my diet. Yeah, have you both realised that yeah, things haven't been good up till now? Yeah. My advice for you, think of Jordan. Yeah. Think of your son, because he learns from you. So what you do, essentially, he I does. Know, yeah. And if you're eating this terrible diet, it's exactly what he's going to be doing. Yeah. OK, and with you, Kevin, food has to become a priority. Now, you know, are you living to work or working to live? Which is it? Food is important. It sustains you. It's the, it's the one thing that keeps you alive. And if you're denying it, you're going to suffer as a result of it. So think about it. Important thing is that we've said that we're going to support each other through it as well. If yeah. one of us is having a bad day, ring the other one up yeah, or text. Them and just support yeah, each other. Yeah. I'm really glad that you said that you would talk to each other and contact each other. I think that's great. Help each other. And I wish you both really the best of luck. All right? Thank you very much. I'm actually looking forward to getting home and starting all them plans. It's, it's, it's exciting. Uh, I'm not thinking, oh, God, I've got to, get, got to start a diet when I get home. Because I don't feel like I'm going to be going on a diet. And I think that's what the difference is this time. We'll be catching up with Kevin and Julie nine weeks into their healthy eating plan. Kevin, it's a hug. <laughs> it's been good luck with everything. Yeah, you too. It's very really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. All right, darling. I'll see you see, soon. See Bye. Soon. Bye. Coming up, Kevin and Julie return for their weigh-in. Do you remember how much you weighed when I first met you? Um, I can't remember exactly. It's stone five. Now... And Anna reveals if hypnosis has really helped her lose weight. OK. Following my sessions of hypnosis, I'm as keen as a chocoholic in a chocolate shop to find out if this latest therapy has shifted any weight. Here goes. <sighs> OK. Oh, wow. Just through the power of my brilliant mind, I've lost three pounds! That's fantastic. That's the most I've lost on any of these diets. 10 stone, 11. Brilliant. Do you know what? I can't quite believe I'm saying this, but I've been walking past this food all week and there's no way I'm going to eat this, OK? So I'm going to do something fairly radical. I was convinced I'd be adding hypnosis to my long list of failed weight loss regimes. And while it might not be for everyone, it certainly seems to have worked for me. Now that is the power of hypnosis. Mission accomplished. My journey through the mad world of dieting continues, and over the next few weeks I'll be finding out just what crazy regimes our cousins across the pond are up to and meeting a woman whose diet has brought her close to death. Nine weeks ago, Kevin was a microscopic super skinny who weighed in at just eight and a half stone. It was the lowest weight he had ever been. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Hey. Nice to see you. How's it been going? Yeah, it's been going really well. I'm feeling really positive towards food now. You are? Have you made some changes? Yeah, I made some drastic changes when I got back. And do you think you've put on some weight? I hope so. Lots of people have been commenting about my face and saying that it looks like I put weight on in my face. I think you look much healthier, I do. Let's go find out. Come with me, let's go with you. He's now following a healthy, balanced diet plan and is looking glowing. But will he have put on those crucial extra pounds? It's time for him to get on the scales for his final weigh-in. Lovely. And you? He's reunited with Diet Swap partner Julie to share the results. So, Kevin, do you remember how much you weighed when I first met you? Um, I can't remember exactly, but it was eight something. Eight stone five. And now. You've put on four pounds. You're eight stone nine. I, I, I am pleased, and it's a step in the right direction, and it's the continuation of it afterwards. It means that you're doing all the right things, and it's working. Do you think he's going to keep this up? Yeah, I think so. He's been doing really well, and I've been talking to him all the way through. 
He's also put on three and a half inches on his waist, half an inch on his thigh, and is on target to reach his ideal weight within a year. But has Kevin's feeding buddy, Julie, managed to see the benefits of a healthy diet plan and lose any weight? Julie, do you remember how much you weighed when you first came here? 26 down something, I think it was. 26 down six. Yeah, it was. A lot. Well, I tell you, now... Come on! <laughs> You're 24 stone 10. You've lost nearly two stone. One stone 10 pounds. Oh, what do you think of that? Sure. What do you think? Well done. I've lost that much. Fantastic. That's nearly two stone you've lost. What do you think of that? That's really good. Well Isn't that well. good? She's also lost four inches from around her waist and three inches from each thigh. What it seems like is I've got two different people standing in front of me now. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Yesterday I tried on certain clothes that were new that never fitted and they fitted and it was a lovely feeling, you know. I actually thought, God, you know, this is oh so worthwhile. It really made me feel happy. Doing this show made me realise that I did need to make some changes when I went home and that I can achieve it if I do persevere and try hard. It feels good to know that I have put on some weight and that it's only the beginning, it's not the end of it. Kevin's given this swap real thought. He's gone back and looked at his life and he's made time for food. It's now a priority and it's showing. His skin is better and he looks healthier. If you are affected by any of the issues raised in this programme and would like more information, then log on to www.channel4.co.uk forward slash health. Next time on Super Size vs Super Skinny, one bony and one bulging bride to be hope to turn into wedding bells for their big day. Good grief, you're so nice. But the honeymoon doesn't last long when gourmet grub guzzler Rosemary turns her nose up at Super Skinny Jeanette's junk food snack fest. I wouldn't give it to my dog. Oh. And Anna Richardson finds it hard to swallow a sweet and sickly liquid diet. Ew, maple syrup. I'd sooner be bathing in that than drinking it, tell you. Well, you can buy Dr. Christian Jessen's book, Super Size vs. Super Skinny, in shops now, priced £14.99. Born with an incredible physical deformity that made her resemble the Hindu goddess of wealth, the girl with eight limbs, next. <laughs>